and preferred partners at TMC Loan Logics. Been part of the network for more than five years. Uh, Loan Logics was formed really to improve the transparency and the accuracy of the mortgage process and increase loan quality. And with a rich heritage that began all the way back in 2005, uh, Loan Logics' red tech capabilities really help uh, residential mortgage lenders, servicers, insurers, and investors validate not only compliance, but also improve their profitability, as well as manage risk during um, the manufacturing and acquisition of loan assets. So leading today's discussion, uh, for, uh, blah, privilege to have with us uh, EVP and Chief Business Officer at Loan Logics, Craig Riddell. Uh, Craig's responsible for establishing and developing ongoing relationships with LoanLogic's largest enterprise clientele, as well as leading the LoanLogic sales, marketing, and account management functions. Uh, Craig's got a long tenure with LoanLogic, serving as head of client solutions for uh, one of the two entities that merged to form LoanLogic's back in 2013. So with more than 20 years of mortgage industry experience and uh, rich history at LoanLogic's, Craig has and continues to be a trusted leader um, involved in the strategic growth of the organization. Now, similarly, Don McKillop, who is also leading today's discussion, has more than 20 years of mortgage industry experience with roles that span uh, really a wide range of borrower facing and uh, mortgage technology sales roles in both the retail and the wholesale environment. Uh, he's also touched on all facets of the loan process at one point in his career. It really gives him a unique uh, perspective on the challenges within the loan life cycle. And today, he serves as Vice President of Sales for Loan Logics, uh, really helping clients improve their quality, their accuracy, and their transparency in the manufacture, sale, and servicing of loan assets. This is also our main point of contact here at the Mortgage Collaborative. Our third and final speaker is Gary uh, Van Deventer, who's got more than 20 years of hands-on experience with MERS processes, uh, including participation in the original design of the MERS system. And he's arguably one of the country's preeminent experts on the policies and procedures within MERS and holds the unique distinction of registering the first MERS loan. So for the past seven years, uh, Gary served as vice president, uh, loan servicing consulting, uh, helping clients approve processes and procedures as a strategic partner in annual third-party attestation for MERS compliance. And prior to joining Loan Logics, he also held the position of Vice President of Product Division at MERS Corp Holdings. Uh, and in that capacity, he oversaw the actions of membership, integration, quality assurance, and training and development department. So really um, grateful on behalf of the Mortgage Collaborative to have each of you gentlemen taking time out of your busy schedules to lead today's discussion for the benefit of our members here at TMC. Uh, so on that note, let's jump right into it. And uh, I'm going to turn things over to Craig Riddell to kick it off. So Craig, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom, very much. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you uh, for your time today. Um, I, I guess I should start, frankly, in, in the new pandemic world, I should start with, a, um, with an apology for a potential lawnmower, dog bark, someone coming to the door that is the new uh, the new life that we live uh, in the pandemic. So um, I'm sure many of you... Uh, uh, on the line have experienced that the last uh, several months. Um, you know, nothing really pushed this more than, than the pandemic, and that is the need for automation. Our industry, frankly, is, is still wrought with post-it notes and checklists and labor arbitrage being used to solve our challenges rather than automation. We all often think about it. We've got whiteboards filled with ideas and workflow diagrams. They just don't always come to life. Um, well, we've been forced into it at this point, right? There's, there's not necessarily any going back to all of the procedures, um, you know, say January, February. So, you know, today we're gonna cover a little bit of what the spotlight of the pandemic has put on all of us in terms of the risks that we need to be aware of, possibly some solutions uh, to start putting into your, um, your routines. Uh, and ultimately some of the new technology that, that we and others will be rolling uh, to the market. Uh, the agenda today, covered by my colleagues Don and, and Gary, um, again, problems that were generated or heightened by the pandemic, um, the importance and the value of technology and that it really is the time, whether it's our technology or a competitor's, um, we just can't do business like we used to. And let's you know, let's not play around with that. It's just time to make those investments of time and resources and money uh, to make those changes. 
Um, and lastly, some of the, the health checks and the next steps being what's downstream, right, from, from where you might be in your workflow. So as we go from origination through secondary all the way down into the migration to servicing, uh, there are health checks to be aware of and to be uh, implementing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll run through, uh, as I said earlier, really no segment of the workflow has been spared. Um, everybody's been exposed to, to some flaws or some concerns that are growing. Um, borrower stability, frankly, it's, it's unfortunately a bit of an oxymoron right now in terms of employment and income, um, probably the greatest exposure right now at any time in our history, um, it brings about the need for new verifications, you know, whether they are completed by an originator or whether the buyer of your asset is going to put your loan through a very similar process that you just went through. Um, changes in procedure, those procedures being done by employees that maybe haven't had to do that work before, uh, maybe they were in different departments, but because of staffing or issues, you know, they've been assigned some tasks that are new they're doing it from home, um, so that certainly adds a challenges. But the general pipeline itself is also exposed. Credit guidelines changing sometimes literally with the intraday adjustments. Knowing where your risks are within the pipeline, it just isn't the old-fashioned FICO, high LTV, you know, low post close uh, liquidity, you know, the four or five kind of bellwether risks. They still exist, but there's new ones that change, frankly, every week. Uh, so your pipeline is, is probably more exposed there than at any time. Um, plus, you're challenged with speed. Because of that instability of your borrower, you want to rush files. You want to get the application in, get it funded before something changes. Um, well, speed is the enemy of accuracy and quality. So just all of those things combined um, are going to bring about the need for some adjustments to your QA and QC uh, practices and policies. Uh, policy compliance. Frankly, it's, it's difficult to document and prove on a good day. Uh, to make sure that you've documented when did what practice change, what loans are to be uh, having this you know, compliance uh, process applied to, who in the organization is responsible to apply them. Uh, is there a second step to validate that a colleague did their work? All of those things that are difficult on a good day, uh, they've been heightened. Uh, I think actually a scenario such as the Mortgage Collaborative right now is a very healthy membership. There's, there's lots of experts, not just us on the phone today, but across the collaborative that can really help with some of the interpretation that has taken place of, of new disclosures in the marketplace. You know, who in your organization makes those interpretations? Is it one individual? Is it a group? Is it legal counsel? Um, are you finding that peers of yours have a different interpretation? Uh, and if so, you know, what's your, what's your risk and exposure? Um, secondary uncertainty, frankly, you know, from say mid-March till now, uh, but particularly those first several days, there were lots of hasty decisions made. Exposure uh, was identified, uh, shifts were made from mandatory to best efforts, margin call pressure, you know, all of that happened in, in a very condensed period of time. Um, that just puts pressure on the people involved and their frankly, likely to make a mistake. Uh, it's got to be done quick. So again, speed and accuracy are, are flawed uh, when, when combined. Um, they were dealt with when credit boxes were changing, again, truly on the fly. So someone's in the pipeline, they're making decisions to buy, sell, pair off, et cetera. And here comes a fax, if you will, or an email, a notification of another change. And now they've got to change yet again. Does that make its way all the way back to the loan originator who might be in communication with the consumer or the processor uh, who may have just told that same customer something vastly different two hours ago? Um, that, that's obviously a risk that uh, just customer satisfaction, let alone the, the real uh, loan level risks. Um, the, the access to the cash windows, for those of you going direct to the GSEs, it was a lifesaver for some to, to, to offload uh, clear up their warehouse. But frankly, you know, the, the game you have there is, is leveled off with the risks of you don't get the steps and conditions that you might find dealing with some of your more common buyers. So whether you like it or not, you know, getting those conditions and steps, it's a glimpse into your operation. It's telling you where you might have hiccups either in your technology or your personnel. 
So the more and more that that business got sold direct to the GSC, the less feedback you were getting. While volumes were high, speed was at its apex. Again, a recipe for, for concerns. Um, business continuity and staffing as another segment here. In most business continuity plans and disaster recovery um, practices, they didn't anticipate you know, a four month duration to the procedures. Uh, a lot of those are built for those true emergencies, um, you know, power outage, ISP outage, uh, some other issues that might last for 24, 72 hours. Um, but to stand up your business and run it in disparate locations is just not something most of us practiced and planned for. Every Visio diagram of how work was supposed to get done, it didn't include the work from home distractions and the human nature routines that your employees um, you know, just, just have as a part of their lifestyle. Um, yes, they might be more productive in the sense of they, didn't, they don't have their hour drive to work and their hour drive home, but they are exposed to other risks, uh, data security. You know, they may only have one monitor, et cetera, uh, at, um, at home, and, and now you've got other issues. Um, and I mentioned early that labor arbitrage is, is another solution to our process, our, our, our industry's procedures has been to, to offshore business. Uh, many of you that, that may have had that model saw business come back onshore. Either your vendor was unable uh, to, to uh, conduct business, your business um, info security restrictions didn't allow those uh, participants to work from home. And now you're thrust with more to do. It's being applied to employees who might view it as work that is monotonous or beneath them or something that they're not familiar with at the least. Um, and for those of you that were able to still maintain your, your offshore BPO, you had latency issues with technology. You might have had just different political climates that you had to, to, uh, to anticipate and deal with, uh, let alone, frankly, the true risk of the health concern that's at the core of all this. That if one of the locations that might have been able to retain its operation if there was an illness that, that sparked within that organization, that now that venture, you know, that group that you partner with uh, is impacted. All of that, you know, kind of working its way back into your operation. Um, and lastly, across the spectrum is portfolio management. You know, data transfer itself, again, it's ripe for errors on good days from the LOS to the subservicer, whatever the connections are, there's, there's data that's flawed, there's mapping that is incorrect, it still happens. Uh, across the board, we see it every day in our operations in the work that we do, which is to identify, you know, those gaps. Um, third parties, title companies, rear quarters at the county courthouses, all of those other entities that you just don't always think about, they had challenges, they had practices, they had procedures that they tried to install that maybe didn't work. Um, and perhaps you haven't had a chance because you've all been busy uh, to really take time to breathe and think you know, I just touched on five segments of the workflow. None of them have been business as usual. So treating your QA, your QA procedures, your workflow, if you're not making changes in that part of your business as a reaction to what's been happening, then your exposure is, is unknown. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's, that's what we're here to try and help, is to just remind you that when you're so, you know, so busy at work, you, know, you do have to stop and sharpen the saw, if you will, rather than, than keep chopping. Uh, next slide, please. So it, as a quick summary, you know, what if the CEO of your operation, I'm assuming many of our guests today are in the risk or the operations or the QC uh, segments of their business. You know, what if the CEO of the operation came to you and, and said, you know, Craig, what are you, what are you doing now, right? We've been through all this change. We've had the staffing upheaval. We've had BPO operations uh, struggling. We've had some technology problems. We had to sell to a bunch of, of new uh, parties with new credit guides. Um, you know, what is it that you're doing? Um, so these are just a few examples. You know, one is, are you leveraging more technology? And if not, are you making plans to consider? Again, whether it is Loan Logics or one of our fine uh, you know, peers and competitors, uh, at the end of the day, that's gonna breed the consistency and the accuracy that you need uh, we've all just experienced that everybody's behavior is is ripe for, um, you know, for, for errors, right? Just a classic human error. So it's time to make those investments, whether you're going to do QC yourself or outsource it. The tools are there. They've gotten better and better every year, and now's the time to invest. 
Um, do you change the sampling, whether it's the amount of loans, whether it's the frequency at which you look at them, whether it is the makeup and the characteristics of the files, all of that has to be reconsidered. Um, if you were to go all this year and not change your sampling methodology, or at least have those consultative discussions, you, you really are, are leaving yourself exposed. And this is the time to reevaluate uh, those parts of your business. Um, evaluating the actual audit trail. Um, frankly, you know, we deal with it with many in this business. Some of our customers, they, they simply check the box. They get their report, they look at it briefly, they move on. You cannot do that right now. Really, you can't do it at any time, but you know, let's be realistic, it does happen. Right now, the next three to four months worth of QA, QC results are paramount to shine a light on where in your business were you exposed, what do you need to change about your disaster recovery and other practices. It really is time to take those audit results, examine them deeply, up and down your organization from the CEO to your, your newest employee. They need to know where the flaws were found and what's being done uh, to correct them. Um, outsource services uh, and resources. Again, sometimes a fresh set of eyes on the business is healthy. So even those that do the work uh, internally and have the, their own procedures, even if you take a few files, right, you know, 5% of your work and have an outsourced party take a look at it, it's probably a healthy time for that as well. Uh, just a, again, a fresh set of eyes uh, we recommend, uh, again, whether it's ourselves or, or others. Um, you know, and, and lastly, transactional certainty. It goes back to automation, which is, which is where I started today. It is time to invest. It really, really is. We're never going to go back to the, the prior procedures in their entirety. Um, and, you know, you know that, that's really where the emphasis needs to be. Um, that being said, I will uh, introduce my colleague, Don McKillop. Don's going to cover a few other health checks and also share some of the new technology that we're bringing to market. Thank you all. Hey, thanks, Craig. Hey everybody, my name is Don McKillop. I'm over at Loan Logics, and uh, I am your liaison, as you heard from Tom, that uh, I am your liaison between Loan Logics and uh, the Mortgage Collaborative. A uh, little background on myself, uh, some of you know me out there. I'm a familiar face. Uh, I've been in the financial industry for a little over 25 years. Uh, I've held a position from processing all the way up to secondary marketing. Uh, and a big part of that uh, also over the LOS side and document data side. Um, seven of those years, I was a loan originator. And uh, you know, I know truly, I can tell you through, uh, through personal experience, where the bottlenecks are in trying to close a loan. Your biggest challenge then and, and now is still the process of receiving, reviewing, and submitting a complete file through processing and into underwriting. So... Let's, let's crank things up right now with what's going on today. Um, we're in unprecedented times uh, with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic in our industry. And uh, it's that challenge that I've spoken about has grown exponentially bigger. Uh, rates have gone down and your refis are going up. And we're still faced with that, that big question, right? Uh, can I process loans accurately and efficiently to capitalize on market demand. One big culprit of this is still that big manual processes that we spoke about. Uh, you have uh, docs uh, coming in in dribs and drabs, uh, docs that are unclear and unreadable. Uh, you have your customers who truly don't have a, a direct line on how to get a VOE or a VOD from their, from their uh, banks or their, their works, their work environment, uh, all slowing things down. So, uh, you know, what we've done is, uh, you know, we've, we've cranked up the volume uh, within uh, what we're going through on this pandemic. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are faced with uh, similar issues. Uh, you have a reduced staff or a remote staff. And what is this doing? This is, tr this is really, truly kind of uh, revealing many of the manual processing weaknesses that you have. Um, you, have uh, you have days to close a loan that are lengthening. Uh, something else, it's affecting your lock extensions and uh, net net it's, it's truly going to be, it's, it is, it's, it's squeezing your margins. Uh, next slide, please, Kristen. So how do you, how do we get out of this manual doc processing mess? Uh, well, pretty much you have to automate first uh, and through the automation, through machine learning, uh, through AI, 
uh, you're able to, you know, enable all of these solutions to help you to process these documents. You're receiving them, they're being indexed, they're being, your data extraction is being taken care of through them. Um, what else? You want to use staff to manage those exceptions. Uh, you know, instead of uh, looking at 350 pages, they're looking at 20 pages and, uh, you know, really speeding, expedi expediting their file setup. You want to create accessibility. On the accessibility, ha have secure file delivery options. Integrate to other systems easily with our open APIs and uh, use industry standard outputs. You can distribute the workload. On distributing the workload, you eliminate downtime and bottlenecks. You, uh, you enable real-time monitoring and notifications. You're turning your processing or your setup teams uh, truly into exception-based processing and setup teams without not, not looking at a whole file. They're looking just at that, those exceptions that are needed to, to move the file forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do here for you is uh, I'm going to introduce our uh, Loan Logics Cloud Native uh, Digital Assistant, is what we like to call it. Uh, also, our Loan Logics Idea on Demand. Um, we feel this technology truly transforms a lot of the doc processing in your loan production. Again, expediting things uh, in this, uh, in this uh, environment that we're in, right? So let me just share my screen here. Fantastic. Okay, just one moment. Just trying to get that out of the way. Okay, so here you have our Loan Logics uh, Idea on Demand uh, uh, solution. And uh, what it, I want to show you here is how machine learning automation can, it classifies, it extracts data in seconds. Um, Idea on Demand recognizes over 480 document types and uh, over 8,000 data extractions. Uh, all of this through uh, automation with superior accuracy. So uh, let me, you know, enough talk. Let me jump in here, show you how quick and easy this is going to be for your processing or setup teams. All right, so you're here. We're just going to create a new file. Great. Now we're just going to draw, drag and drop our documents and submit. It's that easy. It's uploading the documents for us, as you can see. Uh, the pipeline has just been updated, and you can see your file right here. 30 demo is where we are on this. Um, across the top here, you have your filtering for looking up files. You have your settings for an audit trail. If you have a reference number, and you can generate a CSV. Taxonomy, really cool, really great function that is needed. You can choose the document to be renamed for, uh, for export. You can select the documents that you would like to rename. Pretty handy. You can save there. How to add a new user or a setup. You know, you can just go to add new, put the first name, last name, username, email, that easy, that quick. And then you give them the permissions on what you would have them do on Idea on Demand. You also have your screensaver, or I call it eye saver. You know, you're staring at the, uh, your laptop all the time. Your eyes are getting tired. You can switch it over to the darker screen. Sometimes I do that just to save on my eyes as well. So it's very easy. And also you have your notifications. Over here on the right, as you're going through a file, you will see notifications popping up. And all of those will be, you can see where you are and what's transpired. Okay. So right here now on, on demo 30, everything's gone through on our doc indexing and versioning. There wasn't an issue, was able to uh, identify on the data extraction. So we're just gonna go over to the far right here, click on data extraction. Now this is very intuitive. This is gonna help uh, your folks probably, you know, triple in the amount of time of setting up uh, a file and, uh, and going through all of the, uh, the different things they need to go through in setting up alone. It's intuitive, it's gonna move you through the pages, truly expediting everything up for you. So we're on page one here, it's 338, it's yellow. You can dial up the confidence as you go. 338, you have your focus uh, freeze frame in the middle, so when you click on it, it does pop up in front of you. 338, that is a go, so just click it, intuitively moves on to the next page. So it's 4,600, as you can see here, that's 4,500. So we're just gonna put a five in there and we can move on. Green to go. Title abstract is cor correct inside the uh, 
frozen frame, the frozen frame there. 375, correct. Title and closing, title lenders insurance, fantastic save. Again, look how this is, this is work, this is great. Uh, dot, this is comma, comma, com. We're gonna change that to dot com, as you can see on the uh, frozen frame there. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, save. Moving to the next page. So we have 218092. We're all set there. Next we have yes. Homeowners dues, yes. Save. Moving through. Uh, 086. We click on the caution that we have set up on the confidence on the frame that here we can focus. We can see that is 5086. So easily taken care of. 5086. Save. Page four, these are empty. Again, you can set up the, uh, the confidence on what you want to have brought forward as an exception. I'm just gonna click right through these because yes, they are empty and that we didn't need that information at this time. Uh, here we have the uh, uh, address, email address, and this is adding up here. We're just gonna click over to the side there and we see that is correct. Correct. 7035, and that, as you can see on the, the focus frame there, that's 555. Easily done. Just click in there, change it, and hit save. 3260 on here. As you can see, that's 3200. That easy to, uh, to change. Hit save. So all of this is just moving you right through the file, right? Um, it, it's easy to create the file. Um, it's, it's just showing you all the notifications, as you can see, as we're working through things here. Larry, the loan officer, we're all set there. Nibs Bank, we've worked the file. We know that is MBS Bank. So we have that there. And on the frame, that's all set on a save. So look at all exceptions have been cleared up on the notifications that you can see up in the top uh, right hand corner here. And you can return to the pipeline. It's intuitive. Once all exceptions are taken care of, you can return right back to the uh, to your uh, your pipeline. Another nice thing I'd like to show here as well is uh, just one second. Just going to get back out to the demo here. Uh, you can also click in here. You have your exports. If you'd like to export, you have your JSON, your PDF, or your MISMO. You can download that. It'll uh, populate in the left hand corner. Click on it. You can uh, have your your export. It's that easy. So uh, what I've showed you here probably took, we looked at a, a bunch of documents, took care of over uh, 30 uh, exceptions, and I don't think it took us more than you know one or two minutes. Uh, as you go through it, as you get more uh, proficient with it, you can see how, how well your uh, processes or set of people can uh, expedite setting up files for you. Uh, so it's that simple. Uh, this took seconds and minutes. And I really feel that uh, Idea on Demand can uh, truly help you get, help everybody out on this side of things. So if you imagine how this can help with your production or setup teams, I think you'd be able to see a, a better a better process for everybody. So really appreciate it, everybody. And at this time, I would like to turn this over to uh, Gary Van Deventer. Thanks, Don. We'll wait for Kristen. The screen. Earlier, Craig outlined the challenges and obstacles facing loan production during this crisis. In my role as VP of Loan Servicing Consulting and supervising MERS audits, I see these same obstacles and challenges affecting mortgage servicers. Should there be a next wave, as some scientific experts predict, or in these challenging times, some other unknown catastrophic event, servicers and subservicers need to focus on long term solutions. Next slide, please. Business continuity. Servicers typically employ hundreds of people to perform the multitude of day-to-day -day servicing tasks. It's been common for companies to have facilities in more than one location, customer service here, default management there, et cetera, et cetera. And these business units have been communicating remotely on a routine basis with no issues. However, remotely managing significant numbers of individuals through this crisis certainly has presented communication and motivational challenges, all of which can affect not only production, but quality. Long-term solutions might see a more widespread utilization of messaging apps for instant messages like Slack or Microsoft Teams 
to provide more immediate responses to questions and to facilitate group conversations between managers and employees. We certainly are seeing more use of video conferencing services. Here we are. Sometimes I feel like I need to join the Screen Actors Guild. For hardware, it's common for supervisors, managers, and executives to have laptop computers and docking stations since they may frequently be out of the office on business travel and they need to stay connected. That's not the case for the typical staff member who performs his or her tasks at a LAN-connected desktop machine. Post-pandemic, it may be more effective to migrate to mobile computing solutions and transition all users to laptops. This could also enhance in-office security by allowing the asset to be locked in a cabinet or drawer after the office closes instead of sitting out on the desk. When employees can return to working in the office, what configurations will be necessary to ensure their continued safety and health? Prior to the pandemic, a Florida servicer's building would be filled with rows and rows and rows of cubicles, sometimes even bullpens or pods with multiple users sharing the same space. In our own offices, our floor plans are being arranged to allow greater social distancing between employees. In portfolio management, mortgage servicing involves numerous life of loan transactions. Many, if not most, involve manual processing. Servicing has typically been hesitant to expend the capital to automate such functions as verification of loan data after new loan setup, payoff and lien release processing, MERS transactions, transactions, et cetera, et cetera. For years, we've discussed e-mortgages. This crisis drives home the need for the mortgage industry to finally put forth a concerted effort for e-mortgage adoption. Not only do we find benefit in the origination and closing of new loans, we also find benefits to aid in the automation of many servicing tasks, increasing efficiency and improving quality. With e-mortgage data, we can eliminate the manual entry of all of those data points required for many servicing processes. Working with the MBA and the National Association of County Recorders, for example, to push for even greater adoption of e-recording could also help eliminate the paper and its accompanying manual data entry and lien release processing. It's no longer a matter of we can't afford to do that. It's now we can't afford not to do that. Change slide, please. In discussing borrower stability, obviously one servicing area that has been dramatically impacted by the pandemic is default management. When we look at this data from the MBA, you can see the increase in the default rate just from fourth quarter 2019 through first quarter 2020. Breaking it down regionally, it's a bleak picture. Next slide. When looking at forbearance rates just for 2020, the MBA data shows a dramatic rise which can only be expected to escalate further over the coming months. Unfortunately, there's no solution the mortgage industry can provide to change a borrower's financial circumstances. We can only prepare for the influx of forbearance requests, modifications, and even more importantly, eventual foreclosure activity. This means maintaining a close eye on changing regulatory requirements and possibly increasing staff to handle escalating volumes of borrower inquiries, the counseling of available options or programs, and processing the accompanying documents and forms, manually, of course. As forbearance periods end in the next few months, those borrowers who have been able to return to some form of normalcy may require loan modifications. Loan modification agreements for loss mitigation, while not rare, have not been all that common. One company I work with processed less than 50 in 2019. They've already exceeded that number just since the beginning of this year. When modifying MERS loans, servicers need to recognize the special characteristics required for those agreements. Change slide, please. It's extremely important to take the time now and review your modification policies for MERS compliance. In response to the consent order from the OCC following the 2008 financial crisis, MERS began requiring its member servicers to obtain an annual attestation from an independent third party that the member is compliant with all MERS processes and procedures and rules of membership. As an independent third party review organization, LoanLogix conducts these audits reviews for its clients. One area I look at 
as part of this examination is recordable documents. Invariably, loan modifications seem to fail the review more than any other document. Again, probably because they were previously not that common. Since MERS is the mortgagee or beneficiary of record, it must be a party to any loss mitigation modification of the mortgage. The borrower, the lender, and MERS will all be parties to the modification. Since the requirements are based on the MERS rules, the MERS procedures manual should be your first source of information. If you're a MERS member, you can always download the latest version in the members only section of the MERS website, www.mersinc.org. If you do New York SEMAs, review those procedures. If you're refinancing a MERS loan from another lender and you don't originate MERS loans, you'll have to assign the old loan out of MERS. Conversely, if you're planning on the new money mortgage being closed as a MERS loan, then the old mortgage must be a MERS loan, either with MERS as the original mortgagee or by assignment to MERS. As refi volumes increase, you may have additional staff signing these agreements. For a MERS document, you must ensure all signers have complied with the MERS corporate resolution management system requirements, passed the CRMS test, and been authorized by a MERS corporate resolution. There are significant penalties for MERS documents signed by unauthorized personnel. To ensure the correct identification of MERS and to find resources for language, again, consult the MERS procedures manual. Here you'll find explicit rules for how MERS can and cannot be recognized. For example, MERS should never be recognized as a lender, beneficial owner, or a licensed financial institution. The best resource I've found for modification agreement verbiage is Fannie Mae's Form 181, which can be found on their website. It provides line-by-line -line specifications for MERS verbiage, including specific versions for Washington, Oregon, and Montana. As always, your legal counsel should provide the final say as to what fulfills the MERS requirements and protects your lien. If you're utilizing an outside counsel, provide them with the necessary information to ensure the documents they create are MERS compliant. Regarding the MERS system itself, you're no longer required to update the loan information on that system to reflect standard modifications or SEMAs. You're still required to update information for any modification that occurs for a one-time closed construction loan that was originated on MERS documents and is now converted to PERM. If you want further information about maintaining MERS compliance and the third-party review responsibilities, you can view a white paper on our website at www.loanlogics.com. Uh, there's information also there on your screen. MERS compliance is an ongoing process. Make sure you're up to date on any new requirements or procedures. I'll make also make sure that your independent third-party review organization is looking at all recordable documents as part of a complete annual monitoring of your organization. Thank you for your time, and I'll turn it back to Craig. Thank you, Gary, very much. <clears throat> and thank all of you, uh, Don, as well. Um, just as a, as a bit of a summary here, um, if nothing else, I'm going to ask all of you to commit to change, right? That there's just, it, it's that time. We cannot do the policies we used to do. It's time to alter the sampling methodology. Um, it's time to, to consider the new investment in technology that you've been considering. Um, it's, time to, it's time to act upon it, you know, make it an initiative that by the end of the year, uh, some of those procedures are going to become automated and, and set those responsibilities. Uh, you know, Don showed a little bit of our, our latest idea on demand. Um, that's a free trial. You, you can come in, put your own files through that, uh, test it yourself, you know, um, anytime you can contact Don or, or contact us directly through the website uh, and we'll get that set up. Um, reconsider how you evaluate your QC results. Who looks at them? How often you look at them? How deeply do you really evaluate the types of conditions and steps that you're, that you're getting from your aggregators? Um, it can't just be that we've got our head down doing our job. Um, we do need to look up. We do need to look at, at the investments that have to take place in automation. Um, it, it's really the only way, it's the only path forward uh, for those that are going to make it through uh, this process and really be uh, survivors in the, in the marketplace in the years to come. Um, on the screen, there's also some comments about some of the MERS uh, policies that Gary mentioned. 
Those are available uh, through our website, some of the white papers that he's authored. Um, more information about the digital assistant, the idea on demand, uh, as well as some of our own staff has put some materials out uh, about some of the nuances with regards to re-verifications, et cetera. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about realizing that we're not going back. Uh, it's time to automate, it's time to change. And um, we're grateful for the collaborative to uh, ask us to participate today. And I'd like to, to reintroduce uh, Tom, who may have a couple of questions that may have come in during the, the session today. Craig, appreciate it and appreciate you, Don and Gary, going through all that detailed information. And, uh, you know, first off, attendees, this would be your time. Any questions that you have for our discussion leaders today can feel free to filter those if you do the chat or Q&A function. And I'll remind our attendees, too, we will have um, some digital assets uh, presented on behalf of our partners at Loan Logix that we'll share as part of the follow-up correspondence. Uh, with access to a copy of the deck and the recording as well tomorrow. Um, so I've got a couple of questions lined up here. Uh, Craig, I'm going to direct this one your way first off. With uh, TRIP remaining a compliance priority and the new interpretive rule from the CFPB, uh, how does Loan Logics in particular help streamline those compliance reviews? Um, yeah, thank you, Tom. Uh, I think what you're referencing is that uh, really the the impact of COVID is, is deemed a satisfactory change circumstance uh, in the marketplace now. Um, uh, as you saw during Don uh, McKillop's demonstration, we operate a tool which we call IDEA. Uh, that essentially leverages um, automated doc recognition and data extraction uh, in a machine learning uh, environment. Um, and basically, as files get submitted, we capture all the data off of every instance of an LE, every instance of a CD, um, all of that is compiled, it is displayed to an auditor, whether it is one of our customers that's using the software or whether it's our operators. Um, that collection is evaluated if everything looks to be complete. There's a very tight integration with another partner, Compliance Ease. So their compliance analyzer, the results, uh, you know, first generation data comes right back into the interface, um, as well as the report, the PDF report joins the file. But any changes to those uh, compliant regulations, whether they be adjusted within our website or within compliance ease, um, they are live essentially immediately. We can go right in, you know, behind the scenes and the credentials, alter what is acceptable, uh, and also we stay current with our very, very tight uh, integration. But frankly, because of that automation, our teams get close to 18 to 19 loans per person per day in a compliance examination. Um, many that join us are coming from either a spreadsheet or a stare and compare process that frankly might be four or five you know um, completed loans per person per day um, and really once they're proficient getting 13 15 18 loans per person um, is how we, we get it done so not only is all of that data automated um, it's extremely accurate um, and the, the throughput productivity is a great roi tool Got it. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Don, I'm going to reference you here. The, uh, you know, as you're going through that idea on demand uh, demonstration, you know, it really evidenced the ease of use. Um, curious, you know, in particular in this COVID environment, how do you guys facilitate training and adoption uh, for remote teams? Yeah, of course. Um, no problem at all. Uh, we've taken, we've actually taken that one step further. So, uh, when considering the technology, it's always great to be able to try a product experience, uh, what it can offer before you make that commitment to buy it. So as you heard Craig uh, speak about it, we have that, uh, that option available for you guys that you can try before you buy and, uh, or play before you pay. Um, take uh, whatever saying you'd like to use there. Uh, so uh, you buy a program uh, when we launch the product. So it is cloud native SaaS solution. Uh, a user only needs login credentials to be uh, to be uh, begin their trial, and um, you know. In addition to that program, we have our team. Uh, it's developed a, a number of short training videos, and there's also support available from Loan Logics customers, customer care teams, um, through email, phone, and even video conferencing. So, we've set this thing up to really uh, to to kind of be seamless and slip in there and help everybody take care of things and learn it quicker. That's awesome. You know, very few and far between do I see 
a lot of partners willing to kind of offer that try before you buy model, you know, to be able to really feel out the uh, the platform offering and, and how they can apply it to better optimize their organizational processes. So that's awesome. Um, I've got one last question here that I'll present out to Gary before we wrap today. Uh, knowing that, you know, foreclosures are, are something that we're going to have to address some point in the uh, upcoming future. With your experience at MERS, Gary, any recommendations you have for our attendees in adhering to MERS compliance? Yeah, it's going to be very important in the foreclosure process to review the MERS procedures manual again for verbiage requirements. Uh, as everyone should be aware, MERS has prohibited foreclosures being initiated in their name for several years now. Also, bankruptcies cannot be commenced in, in their names. So before you file first legal action or file a proof of claim for a bankruptcy, you have to assign that loan out of MERS, typically to the servicer, and deactivate it on the MERS system. But those assignments need to be very specific and have the correct verbiage because you certainly don't want a savvy borrower attorney picking it apart to halt the foreclosure proceedings. That's a great point, and I appreciate that uh, the guidance and expertise. Um, you know, at this point, I don't have any additional questions, so I'm going to wrap today's discussion just reminding uh, attendees, you know, keep sharing your issues that you're facing with us and our team here at TMC. We'll keep seeking out uh, great subject matter resources, you know, for example, like our partners at Low Logic today, and put similar type discussions kind of centered around the pro topics that are impacting your operations. And Lastly, I want to again thank Loan Logics and I want to thank uh, Gary, Don, and Craig for sharing your invaluable insights today and for each of our attendees for joining us to listen. Not, uh, not lost on us how frantically busy everybody is right now. So, really appreciate the, the time again and, and you guys' invaluable expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, Great discussion and uh, hope everybody has a great remainder of their afternoon.